time ago. And you may even be aware of it, and you may say, I've got to stop doing that. I can't react that way anymore. That's easy. It's the, it's the thing in the back. The ambush is what we need to talk about today. Because often we don't deal with the ambush, so we get ambushed. All right? So what we need to understand, Satan's offense, he's got devil's way to do, some, to do something else in case the first tactic doesn't work. He's got other devils waiting, especially if you get comfortable. All right? When we read this story, right, Joshua was given the plan. He's saying this is what's going to happen. If you read the rest of Joshua, this is exactly what happened. When they attack again, because the people of Ai had just recently had a victory over the children of Israel, they're like, oh, but same thing. Let's do it again. And they came out of the city, all the men, and they attacked. However, this time, God was with Israel, and the men who were behind the city ambushed the city and set it afire. Okay? So, often, in, in, in a lot of our um, preparation or trying to become a Christian or walk righteously, we tend to focus on people's actions. Now notice, we focus on people's actions, not so much our reaction. <coughs> and what we do is, and this is, someone just came out of Genesis 3, I think it was you, David, recently. Uh, in Genesis 3, uh, God comes to Adam. Have you sinned? Have you eaten of the tree I've said not to? And Adam doesn't fess up to it. What does he do? He blames. It's not me. It's that woman you gave me. So he points two fingers. Points the finger at Eve and points the finger at God who gave him me. He blames. Okay? So in other words, the focus is on the action. Eve, of course, gave him the fruit. That's the action. So he's blaming that. Not the fact that he took the fruit and ate it. Not his reaction. So Satan, and, and, and David, you talked about Satan tainting the image of God, right? He, he, he blinds us too. All right? We aren't seeing our sin. We focus on the person who caused us, as we say, caused us to sin. And we should get past that if we're Christians. Nobody caused you to do anything. We, we, you know, we aren't dogs. We aren't animals. We, we don't operate by instinct. We can choose how to react. The problem is you have to get to a place where you can choose. <laughs> that is, that means you got to see it coming and say, I'm not going to do this, I'm going to do something else. Because we are so in tune with those actions, we simply react and think about the reaction after the fact. God is calling us, as we read in Matthew eleven six, to not be offended. That is to not react in the way Satan drains. So we have to focus then on our reaction, not on the person given the action. Because... Why focus on it? Scripture says, in this world you shall have persecution. So it's kind of a waste of time to focus on, the, on the, the, the person. One, we know we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's Satan. And he's going to use whomever to come against you. So if you put your focus on the action, you lose sight that you had a, a reaction that was wrought in evil. And Satan laughs because, of course, if that's where you are, then here you are complaining to the Lord, and he's like, well, you're in sin now. You reacted in evil. You reacted with anger. You reacted with shame. You reacted with disappointment. You reacted with discontent. You, you just go down the list. That's still, remember, we still deal with the frontal attack. I'm, I'm going to talk about the ambush in a second. We're going to deal with the frontal attack. Now, let's use a scenario. Someone close to you, because that's what Satan tends to like to do. Someone close to you comes and accuses you of something that, for you, from your perspective, is not true. But for them, you can't get them off of it. You did this, you, whatever it is. But they're close to you. So it's kind of painful that they judged you in this particular thing. Okay? Well, our reaction to being hurt is many things. For some people, it's generally anger. But it could be disappointment. It could be many things. And because we have been offended, the scripture tells us that when you stand praying the Lord's Prayer, we are to forgive those who have trespassed against us. Mm -hmm. We say, Lord, forgive us our debts 
as we forgive others their debts against us, right? So in other words, sin creates a debt. A debt that has to be paid. And if the office is against me, then I want the debt paid. Mm -hmm. You know, I was talking to my neighbor, we were talking about raising kids. We were talking about just I don't know how we got to talk. We were talking about forgiveness. And it dawned on me that I was training my kids to forgive conditionally. Mm -hmm. As I do well, you know, take uh, my son who is a typical toddler, he's very, got a lot of energy and so forth. And he may be a bit too rough with his, his sisters. So here comes one of the sisters. Daddy! Michael did such and such and such and such. And what we do is, bring Michael. Well, Michael, did you do that? Yeah. You need to apologize. Michael apologizes. So then we turn to, the, turn to my daughter. Now I'll forgive him. Just the other day I said, well, wait a minute. What am, I'm teaching her to forgive if he repents. As opposed to no forgive. Yeah. See, as Christians, we're called to forgive, mm -hmm. regardless if the person repents or not. That's very. Mm -hmm. We're told when you stand praying, forgive. But I just noticed I'm training my kids to forgive only if the person repents. Mm -hmm. And I dare say, probably most of us are training the exact same way. Mm -hmm. But that's not God. He didn't wait for us to repent to forgive us. Amen. Amen. Right? Jesus came. <laughs> we didn't deserve it. Amen. We have to mimic the same thing. Our reaction in righteousness is no longer sin. It's no longer anger and disappointment and despair and this grunt of men and just, you know, give me all these. <laughs> it should be forgiveness. It should be forgiven. That should be our new reaction. We forgive. Offense comes, we forgive. And it ends there. But remember, we struck that mass as a smoldering coal, or in this analogy in Joshua 8, there's an ambush way. Well, what's the ambush? Well, I said, sin creates a debt that must be paid. Mm -hmm. I have two options to pay. I can forgive. Well, that releases the debt. It's gone. But, for most of us, that's not our reaction. We don't forgive. Forgiveness comes way after the fact. Mm -hmm. right? But then if we don't forgive the debt, then the debt is sitting there. And we now lust for vindication. We want the debt paid. And really, what we want the person who offended us to come and ideally rob them. Mm -hmm. Not just say they're sorry. That, that ain't good enough. Sometimes people, people do it. They come and say, but eh, it's not good enough. They don't feel right. We want them to, to grovel. We want them to <laughs> we want them to worship us really what it is. <laughs> but because we will now inherit it, they, they come and say, I'm really sorry. Dude. But our interpretation is, they don't mean it. Because based on us, it didn't look like they meant it. It's like, well, wait, wait a minute. They, they just said. <laughs> but we want them to apologize in a particular way. And many, many times that happens, and we still don't forgive the person because it wasn't the way we wanted it to be done. Mm -hmm. So the offense remains, the debt remains, and we continue lusting for vindication. But the person, if they were sincere, that's no longer on the agenda. Mm -hmm. I, I, I told them I was hard. They're done with it. Here we are carrying on. Because we didn't accept their apologies if we are God. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. God does that. Right. He talks about the right kind of sacrifice and so forth. We are to forgive at all times. Owe no man anything, owe no man anything but to love. love. This is Romans 13, verse 8. So regardless if they mean it or not, our job is to forgive. Because we don't want to be in sin with God, yet looking at God to do something with the other person, he's like, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Frontal attack. All right, we're used to that. So I talk about the ambush. What what does Satan put in us that will ambush us? Well, everyone here, everyone watching by camera, has gone through rejection. We've defined rejection. Rejection is a decision we make. 
right? 